Good morning. Uh, welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church on this cool, cold, rainy morning in northeastern Massachusetts. It's Sunday, March 10th, and it's the fourth Sunday in the Lent season, in the season of Lent. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Pastor John Polk, and I invite you to check out our church and what we're up to on our website, which is htlceaston.org. There's also an opportunity on our website to give, and please know how much we appreciate people's financial contributions because it is only through people's generosity and goodwill that ministry happens from this place. So thank you and welcome. The Holy Gospel this morning comes from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and the people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and from our Sustainer, the Holy Spirit. Amen. John 3.16, no doubt the most well-known, most quoted, most famous scripture in all of the New Testament, and may I add, probably the most misused verse in all of Christianity. You see it at signs on most sporting events. John 3.16. Well, we just heard the New Revised Standard Version, the translation we Lutherans and most Protestants use most frequently. However, I'd like to share with you the King James Version of John 3.16, you know, the old-fashioned English version of the Bible. It goes like this. It's not too different. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Here a slight difference from everyone who believes in him to whosoever believeth in him. Everyone to whosoever. To me, everyone sounds like certain particular people who get, who get it. Whosoever, on the other hand, sounds like it could be anyone. Anyone in the whole wide world, even the most unlikely of people. Take Mary McLeod Bethune, for example, she lived from 1875 to 1955, and she was at the time the most prominent black woman in America. Here's a delightful introduction of Mary Bethune, written by the black poet and social activist Langston Hughes. In his 1956 autobiography titled, I Wonder as I Wander, Langston Hughes recalled being invited by Mary Bethune to give a reading at Bethune-Cookman College in 1929, a college which she co-founded. Now, after that event in Florida, Bethune hitched a ride with Langston Hughes back to New York City. Now, it was in the time of Jim Crow, where black travelers were required to carry an automobile blue book that listed the few and far between places where African Americans were allowed to stop for meals, for restrooms, and for sleeping accommodations. Now, Hughes noted that Bethune avoided much of that indignity of segregated facilities along the road to New York City. How did she do it? He said this, colored people along the eastern seaboard spread a feast and opened their homes wherever Miss Mrs. Bethune passed their way. In fact, he continued, in fact, chickens, chickens, sensing that she was coming, went flying off frantically, seeking a hiding place. They knew 
a heaping platter of southern fried chicken would be made in her honor. Even the chickens knew of her prominence, and it was a remarkable life of service for 60 years. She was an educator. She was a community organizer, a, a public policy advisor, a public health advocate, an advisor to President Franklin Roosevelt, a close friend to Eleanor Roosevelt. She was a patriot. She was a mother. She was a grandmother. She founded a school in Florida that later became Bethune-Cookman College. She served as president of the National Association of Colored Women. She served as president of the National Association of Teachers in Colored Schools. She founded the National Council of Negro Women. And at one time, she was the highest paid African-American woman in government, man or woman, in the Roosevelt administration. And finally, one more thing, but there's many more. She served as a special assistant to the Secretary of War during World War II, recruiting black women for officer training. The list goes on and on and on. Remarkable life. But it was as a young girl that she came across John 3.16. Now, mind you, she grew up on a small farm in South Carolina, the 15th of 17 children, children of former slaves who owned their own farm. And it was at a time when the Jim Crow way of life was just beginning to take hold and would plague the South with anti-black violence for her entire life. Her parents, former slaves, were deeply religious. They encouraged their curious daughter to attend a mission school where she thrived. The young Mary McCloy became so enthralled with learning that she won a scholarship to Scotia Seminary for Negro Girls in North Carolina. And she spent one year at the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. And it was during this formative time that she came across John 3.16. John 3.16, the King James Version, and it changed her life. In her own words, Mary Bethune wrote this near the end of her life. And I quote, with these words from John 3.16, with these words, the scales fell from my eyes and the light came flooding in. My sense of inferiority, my fear of handicaps dropped away. Whosoever believeth in him, it said, no Jew nor Gentile, no Catholic nor Protestant, no black nor white, just whosoever it means that I, a humble Negro girl, had just as much chance as anybody in the sight and love of God. These words, she said, stored up a battery of faith and confidence and determination in my heart, which has not failed me to this day. Do you hear how she first came to believe? And second, how she defines that belief. First, she came to believe because she heard in John 3.16 that God had God's eyes set on her, on her of all people, on her in particular. A young black girl raised by former slaves in a culture that actively sought to eliminate the likes of her from the face of the earth. In John 3.16, she heard in that one word, whosoever, whosoever, that God chose her. Of all people, and at that moment she felt seen, she felt heard, she felt loved, she felt alive. So much so that she was filled with faith and confidence and determination for the rest of her life. Second, do you hear how she defines her belief, her faith? It's not about a passive, private, one-on-one -on -one belief in God. It's not about dividing people up into whoever believes will have eternal life and whoever does not believe will go to some other place. That's the terrible misuse of John 3.16 when it's used to divide and conquer those who are in and those who are out. Sending a message that I'm in and therefore I'm better than you God loves me, not you. I'm in, you're out. I'm in God's good graces, and therefore I'm powerful. And you're not in good, God's, God's good graces, and therefore you are powerless. In fact, you are inferior to me, 
That's the terrible misuse of John 3.16. Instead, Mary McLeod Bethune describes her faith in a, as a life of literally being the light of Christ, as we hear in the gospel text, the light of Christ forever for others, of actively making a difference in the lives of others, of actively improving the lives of others, all because she is standing in the light. Her faith is not about just getting it right between her and God in that private, one-on-one, -on -one intimate relationship. Rather, faith is full of stumbles and doubts and questions while having the courage to swim upstream against injustice and hardship. Faith is full of stumbles and doubts and questions while making decisions to improve the lives of others, sharing the light, sitting still with a one-on-one -on -one quiet, private relationship with God is not an option for her. In the face of so much suffering in the world, neutrality and indecision are not options for her. As one commentator put it, and you will notice the reference to our first lesson this morning from the book of Numbers. She writes, the roads of this world are often filled with venomous snakes and people are weary. People are weary. Just think of our politics. Filled with venomous snakes. Aren't we weary of it? Just think of the evil of war filled with venomous snakes. Just think of our own country. The wealthiest in the world filled with venomous snakes as proven by the fact that one in five children go hungry every single day. The roads of this world, as it is said, are often filled with venomous snakes. And that's the work of the church, to lift up Jesus, to be Jesus. So that those who need healing can find it, actually find it. Those who need food can actually find it and eat. Those who need peace can be rid of war. Those who need love can find it. Those who need forgiveness can find it. That's the work of the church. That's what Mary McLeod Bethune's faith is all about. That's what John 3.16 is. Last Sunday during the children's message, I asked the children what the greatest commandment is, and they knew it. They knew it. To love the Lord God with all your heart and soul and mind. I then asked what the second greatest commandment is, and they knew it. They knew it to love your neighbor as yourself. But I kept going, that's not enough. That's not all. So I asked the children one more question. How do you love your neighbor? How do you show that love for your neighbor? Little Alice quickly raised her hand without hesitation. I called on her and she said, give someone a hug. Give someone a hug. She wanted to do something with her beautiful faith. Just as Jesus died on that cross and rose up on that cross and then was freed from that cross to live forever, so too we must do something with our beautiful faith. John 3.16. Amen.